A heart failure is a condition where the pumping capacity of the heart is no longer adequate for the demands of the rest of the body. There are two particular types of heart failure. One is called heart failure due to systolic dysfunction. And this is a type of heart failure where the heart becomes very large. The heart's pumping capacity becomes extremely weak. The second kind of heart failure is a heart failure that is due to an increased thickness of the heart where the heart muscle becomes very stiff and it's unable to relax well, it's unable to fill adequately with blood. In both cases, there is an inadequate flow of blood to the rest of the body. There is congestion in the lungs and there is the onset of leg swelling and tiredness that uh, patients experience. 1980 was a defining year when uh, we began to look at heart failure very differently. Work done at the Brigham and Women's Hospital here in Boston uh, by Mark Pfeffer and his colleagues showed for the first time that a drug uh, called an ACE inhibitor could stop the disease heart failure right in its track. This was a defining moment uh, for all of us in medicine because we, we learned that we could take a patient with heart failure and in fact begin to attenuate the progression of the illness, not just take care of symptoms. Later on, uh, we began to use uh, drugs like beta blockers, and these drugs showed us for the first time that you could partially improve the pumping capacity of the heart, not just delay the progression of heart failure, but actually improve it. And with that uh, ushered in an entirely new concept that we could change the natural history of heart failure. Following that, uh, we began to investigate other drugs as well as devices. We learned that if we could stop the disease in its tracks, it still had one problem, and that was in some cases the heart would begin to fibrillate and cause sudden cardiac death in patients. And that ushered in an era where we began to place implantable cardiac defibrillators in patients to prevent sudden cardiac death. And all of these things changed the natural history of heart failure in such a positive manner that we were able to save lives. Now, using an LVAD, one can, in fact, uh, take a device, a left ventricular assist device, that can be surgically implanted. And we can selectively just rest the heart while pushing the patient to be more and more functional. Uh, LVADs have been around for several years, and there have been many iterations and generations of the devices. The first uh, generation of left ventricular devices uh, were very large. They were very bulky devices, and they were not necessarily devices that could promote the concept of recovery. They were really uh, used to support end or late stages of heart failure where there was no option of recoverability, where just cardiac support uh, was necessary. Today, the third generation devices have reached a point where they're so small and so uh, durable that we can implant them through minimally invasive surgical techniques in earlier and earlier stages of uh, the disease and uh, help facilitate heart recovery. So this is an example of a, a third generation left ventricular assist device one of those devices that we implant at the Brigham and Women's Hospital Heart and Vascular Center. This device has an inflow cannula that can be inserted into the left ventricular apex, and it draws blood out by a suction force, pumps the blood out into the aorta, and then the blood goes into the systemic circulation. So we look at um, a patient with heart failure as having an opportunity for three specific things. And we refer to them as the three R's of repair, replacement, and now recovery. As a concept, repair means that we can use surgical or non-surgical techniques to take care of components of heart dysfunction that are causing the heart failure. So as an example, if someone has severe valvular heart disease, we can correct the valvular heart disease. If someone has uh, blockages in the coronary arteries, we can revascularize them, or we can combine these surgeries. And so our default is always to try and repair the heart first. If we cannot repair the heart, and the 
condition has reached an advanced stage, we then consider options of replacement. One can replace the heart function using a left ventricular assist device or a totally implantable total artificial heart. And in fact, the Brigham and Women's Hospital Heart and Vascular Center performed New England's first total artificial heart transplant here almost two years ago. The next opportunity is to perform a biological replacement in some patients. And a biological replacement is to replace a heart that's now diseased to a point uh, of no return with a transplanted heart, a human transplanted heart. And we at the Brigham and Women's Hospital have New England's largest experience with heart transplantation. In fact, we've done nearly 650 to 700 heart transplants so far. The third paradigm is to recover the heart function. And work that is being done at the Brigham and Women's Hospital here in our heart and vascular center is now moving a step further in uh, tackling this very important concept of myocardial recovery. So that we have taken the extraordinary step of taking advanced heart failure and completely recovering that in selected cases. The future of uh, treating patients with heart failure is extremely bright. There are a number of things on the horizon uh, that will add to our repertoire of helping patients recover from advanced stages of heart failure. One of the advances is in understanding the genetic causes of heart failure. And in fact, uh, the Brigham and Women's Hospital has been a international leader in helping define some of the genetic causes of heart failure. And we're now uh, looking at reversing and preventing the onset of heart failure in families by the assessment of specific genes. We're very excited about that. A second thing in the immediate future is to look at myocardial regeneration using cell therapy. And this is by using targeted cells that can be infused within the heart that can improve heart function. The third area is with the left ventricular assist devices. As these devices start to get smaller and smaller, and as these devices begin to get fully internalized, that is, that they don't have any components that exit the body requiring battery power, which can in fact be transmitted through transcutaneous mechanisms, that at that point we will begin to recover patients in the earlier and earlier stages of the disease and in fact help eradicate the syndrome of heart failure.